All right, hey guys, it's Lord Knight again. Uh, before I start, I just wanna first apologize. I'm a little bit late, but uh, as y'all know, there was a storm over on East Coast this past weekend. I only got power like Tuesday night, and also in the process, I somehow lost my camera. So the footage I re recorded from Summer Jam is gone, which kind of makes me upset. But, uh, I, I mean, I'm still gonna talk about it right now. While I find, like, some kind of replacement or something, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I'll figure out something by next week for sure, but, uh, I'm just gonna, I'll upload this to YouTube. I'll just put, like, a picture or something on top of it. Uh, I'll figure something out. Uh, this episode is probably gonna be... A little bit longer than last. I'm I I don't know if I should make like actual like webisodes like twenty minute things. Uh, I'll be figuring that stuff out as I go on. So um, the first topic I wanted to cover today. You might know about it. You might hear about it all the time. Tears. BB Tears. Uh, right now, I guess we're in the ninth or 10th month of CS2. I mean, total. Technically, we've only had it since like May, so like four months. So I wanted to look at the Arcadia tier list, the last Arcadia tier list that, I mean, I'm sure you guys know, the one with Makoto S tier. By herself, uh, and compare it with today. Uh, I might. I'm probably gonna look at some Japanese uh, opinions too while we're doing this, and I would also appreciate your input after I upload this. Uh, first, I believe. Let me bring it up. There's like a thread in uh it's called like tears list. I'm checking it real quick. Let me Google that for you. Alright, so the original well I shouldn't say the original, the Arcadia tier list right now from July. Um it has Makoto Alona S, Noel Hazama Jin, Lychee, Valkenheim Carl, Rachel and Taokaka. All A. B, Subaki Mew, Platinum, Hakuman Lambda, Arakune, Ragna Bang, and then Tager is alone in C tier. So this tier list is really uh meaty in the middle. That's that's technically good. I mean not technically good, that is good. That means most of the characters are just really, really good. And there's just two outliers. That's that's fine. Um however I do disagree with a bunch, a bunch of the positioning of like the characters. I know, I know, um, they don't rank them by strength, like horizontally. But a lot of people like to read it like that, anyway. Um, so first, first off, I'm definitely pretty sure I'm a co at least among like top players or good players, even. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, Makoto is definitely the best, like the best character. But I don't think she's the only S tier right now. Um, I think Azama right now is the second best character still, despite uh, his mediocre mid screen damage uh, when he doesn't have meter. Because honestly, Makoto has mediocre mid screen damage when she doesn't have meter. Also, so I mean, she gets like two thousand maybe. She has decent corner carry if you get like if you can confirm it's a double corner upper combo. But outside of that, if she doesn't have fifty meter, she's not really taking you to the corner or doing a lot of damage with screen. Uh, Hazama's the same way. So 
Uh, I think Hazama's like run back power is way, 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 way too high once he gets 50 meter. And it's not hard for him to get 50 meter. Like it's not like it's not really difficult for him to get 50 meter. Like all he needs, like if he, if you're in the corner, most of his combos all get 50 meter. A uh, random hit can give like anywhere between 25 to 50 meter. Like like he's in there as far as getting meter is concerned, and his pressure is good. Like six B plus three. Like, you can't do anything about that. 5B, 6A, you can't even mash it unless you IB, like, or you have, like, a 5-frame move that you can just mash, hit buttons. And obviously, his max damage, like, his max damage is, I want to say it's higher than Makoto's overall. I want to say it's higher. You might, you probably see, I mean, between the two characters, you usually see 100 meter combos between them anyway and that they add like 2.5k almost so both both of them have just like really high damage the main thing that's keeping azama not the best character is just a bit screen game when he doesn't have 50 meter uh i also think his mix-up is not the most intimidating if you don't have 50 meter but he could still like bully a little bit but it's, it's nothing no i shouldn't say nothing it's nothing bad um, equal to Hazama, I'd say right now is actually Valkenheim. Like Valkenheim is pretty ridiculous right now. Valkenheim, I'm smoking hookah right now, so I'm gonna be taking small pauses. Uh, Valkenheim is like he has. I, I want to say arguably better neutral than Tao Kaka, which is saying a lot. Like Tao, like, he, like his movement, he has more freedom of movement than Tao and Wolf. Like, Tao has a lot of freedom of movement, but her, her drives only move her forward. Like, only. Forward, uh, like, up forward, down forward. Like, 8D doesn't even move you straight up. It moves you, like, diagonally up. Same with 2B, uh, my bad, 2D, uh... J4D brings you down and forward, like, everything brings you, like, forward. Even if you're moving up or down, you're still moving forward. Like, Valkenheim can, well, not to even with 4, even with 4D, actually, when I think about it, even with 4D, you're still moving forward. So, despite, despite her having this excellent neutral game, she doesn't have the freedom of movement that Valkenheim does. Because he's, I mean, despite it using all, not all, a lot of his wolf meter, he he really does have like true true freedom of movement. Like he has like seven C, one C, like all all that shit to like just fly around with. Um, but he's not even gonna just fly around. Like once you once you truly understand his movement, um, you just control neutral so well. Like even even though two C was nerfed, he still has the best anti air in the game right now. Wolf five D is by far the best anti anti in the game right now, uh, period. You could just run, I see so many players just run under people and just mash Wolf 5B all day, and what what are you gonna do about it? Try to hit him out, out of it for normal, you're just gonna lose. If you don't have a projectile or something, you can't win against it. And if you do have a projectile, he's probably gonna juke, like, juke backwards or go around, somehow get around it anyway. So, you're, <laughs> you're fucked. Uh, his pressure is really good. Uh, I mean, 60s plus 2, but it's a bit slow. Uh, I see a lot of American players really, really like 60, uh, in pressure in the corner. Um, mm, his mix-up is pretty much unseeable. Like, in Wolf, it's, like, totally unseeable. You, you can try your best. I'm sure people can, like, it looks like they're blocking a reaction, they're guessing well, but, like, some of the stuff you can do is you definitely can't react to it. Uh, I mean, his human pressure isn't even that bad either. Um, when he has 50 meter, he has rising jump C shenanigans. You can't, like, his corner game is amazing. You can't, like, roll out against him or anything. He has the the input option select, with, like, 2A, 2A, C, where they just mash it, and, like, goes 2A, 2C right away. So you have to respect him. But pressure is just way too strong. If there, if he has any weakness, it's... It's I I don't think his damage output is that high. Compared to uh, 
compared to Makoto and Azama, who who uh, have really high damage output, especially in the corner, Valk doesn't really have like high damage, but he has like consistent. He's kind of like Bang last game, but Bang was like consistently 3.5, 4K. Valk is kind of like that. He just kind of gets consistent damage. I'm sure he has. There's like situations where you have like high max damage, but it's not like often. I think that's it for S tier, pretty much. Makoto, if if I want to just comment on Makoto a little bit, uh, she she is probably she people like kind of overestimate her strength a little. Like she's she is good, but like when people say she's like mindless or stuff, I'm like you guys just don't understand how to fight her. Like you have to be good with Makoto to actually bring it well this this is for all characters but people just make Makoto sound easy mode she's she's really not you do kind of need like excellent neutral because her neutral game is limited like most most of the reasons why she does good in some matchups like like say Valk Makoto versus Valk Valk can just if, if Makoto doesn't know the like parry Valk wolf flying stuff or try to parry and then like 5a or 6a then the Valk pretty much just controls the entire pace of the match, totally. You need, you need to know things like that to be good for it. What, what's also good, besides the obvious high damage, corner carry, mid-screen high damage meter, like, she she can, like I was talking about last week, in the matchup commentary, uh, not matchup commentary, match commentary, she can, she can rob you, pretty much. Her damage output is high enough that she has the potential to just steal games from people just from like hitting them. Uh, I was just watching Omni play today. I was just playing Netplay, like Xbox, and I want to say this is against what's his name? Scam for Life? Yeah? Yeah. Scam for Life. So Omni, it's like last round. Omni has a burst, but he's down like. He has like 35% health or something. And then Scam for Life has like 75% but no burst. And Omni hits him with 2C. It's like 2C, B Lightning Arrow, Gold Burst. And then he does this ridiculous combo. It does, does like some 7K combo. And it like almost kills Scam for Life. I'm just like, I forget how he won. He probably did overhead or something. Or like the match last week where I hit Luna Kage for like 8K despite being down the whole round. Like, Makoto can just rob, like, if you're good with her, you have that in, like, your pocket. And then if you're not good with her, then, uh, it doesn't matter, you can still rob people. That's, that's, I think, the main, one of the main factors. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh... Oh, snap. Um, A+, plus, A+. Plus. So, A+, plus, uh, I believe right now is Noelle, then Lychee and Jin, same strength. Rachel, Takaka, Carl, and Mew. Uh, I'm ordering this by, by strength, by the way, in my, my opinion. Uh, Noelle, well, we all know. Well, is like um, probably probably at lower levels of play, she is the best character. But I mean, just like <laughs> random D mash stuff, I don't know what to say. But as far as a uh, good play or high level play goes, she's still like her two A. I didn't even realize this for a little while until earlier this year at Revelations. Her 2A is ridiculous for uh, footsies, like for neutral. It's a really big poke, plus one on block. It's really good for it again. Her pressure is re obscenely safe. Uh, 2B is even, and her 5A is 5 frames, and 2A is 6 frames. Uh, 2C is plus 3, so an I beats even, and then again, 5A and 2A and stuff. And I want to say 2B is... I don't want to say it's 7 frames. I hope it's not 7 frames startup. Let me check real quick. 
it's <laughs> it is seven frames. That fucking that's ridiculous. Or two B is like seven frames to start out. Like our pressure is tight. He has. I don't really want to call it mix up off five C. No, it, it it is it is mix up. I was thinking about five C three C or five C overhead, but command grab is always an issue. Uh, overhead is always an issue now. Her pressure game is really really strong, and you have to play. You have to either, I feel like, just have really good Yomi, have a character that beats her like outright, which which are few. For sure. And or you have to know how they play or something. Or play really, really safe. I prefer playing really safe, of course, against her because the amount of damage I think SKD was doing like four point nine K combos of two D like when he tried to just get out of two D. That's obscene. That's mid screen too. Like she she might I I think out of all the characters she has the highest consistent mid screen damage out of everyone, which really helps her uh, among the rest of the cast. Plus her, her corner game is legit. Like J4D, despite J4D being 31 frames, people get hit by it. People get hit. I have been hit by it a bunch before I got used to seeing it. Uh, in the corner, it's such it's such a good tool, and, and goes of course to the high damage. Plus, for the most part, like Noel, I feel like Noel doesn't care if she gets Oki in the first place. Like if they J four D to hit you out of a corner, and they do like four thousand, I'm doing like a low a low guess of max damage off it. It's probably like closer to five thousand. But if they get like that four thousand, four thousand two hundred, send you mid screen, they're like, uh, okay, whatever. And if you don't have some kind of like good range normal or like good way to deal with like 4D when you jump in or something, then it's hard to approach her. Like her neutral game, she she has a somewhat of a preventative neutral game to stop people from just going in while she can just go in. It's annoying. Plus counter soul's gay. <laughs> uh, I wanna talk about Lychee a little bit. Obviously that's my my main, my real main, Namakoto. Uh Lychee, Lychee. As far as the switch between the changes, since they just switched, the changes between CS1 and CS2. Lychee, Lychee mid screen, CS1 was hit, confirmed the hit into maximum, maximum possible damage. Corner knockdown, probably die shutting. This game, you can still do that, but it's not off every hit. You have to confirm your counter hits or go for very specific things to take them to the core, like 4D. Right now, I think 4D is the best overhead in the game. Uh, comparing to like the other characters, like Makoto, Makoto's overhead is great. But mid screen, it doesn't really give you much unless you have meter. Hazama the same, and Rensinga is nothing special. Valks Sig C doesn't give you anything mid screen. I mean, obviously in Wolf he has like unseeable high lows, but whatever. Uh, and the Wolf Noel's overhead is the only overhead that gives that's that gives damage mid screen like a respectable respectable compared to CS one damage mid screen but I mean it takes them to the corner but she's not in the corner with you like light she's 4d it's safe from like a couple character links away like one one and a half uh it carries them to the corner and it gives die shooting like it might like if it did if it did let's say I want how much does it do like 3.9 I think the, the normal if I do double 4d combo it would do like 4,000. 6A mid screen to corner in CS1 was 4,200. I believe it's also 4,200 in the corner as well. So, and Lychee's 4D combo, if you go for the max damage 4D combo, it is 4,000 damage. So, she's doing only 200 less than CS1, which is 
practically negligible. Uh, she still gets Demeter, and she still gets Daishin. The, the move is obscene. Uh, 3C is still good. Not as good. Not 5,000 damage good. It's like, but it's like 5,000, I shouldn't say 5,000, 500 damage less with screen uh, if you confirm it properly, but you need to be point blank. It's good. It's still good if you get the hit, but I don't think it's that scary. Uh, I see one. So, mid screen, if if they have a good neutral, like what they did pretty much is staff like she gets rewarded for counter hits, not for normal hits, for the most part. Outside of 4D point blank, 3C, uh, and throw. Staffless Light Chi just gets rewarded for hitting you. So Staffless Light Chi can take you to the corner from mid screen, and her overhead is safe. As in, she could go to another normal safely. Um, her pressure is ridiculous, like very, very good. A very free form. Lots of ways to cancel the things safely, keep you in pressure, bait things. Uh, Dai Shining is. Dai Shining, I want to say, is better than CS1. The damage output is higher than CS1 off the mix ups. Like, on Taker, uh, I mean, I know Taker isn't the best example always, but on Taker, you can do uh, consistently like 4.8k off a uh, high low mix up. Unseeable also, because, you know, he's Taker and he's huge and I have Rising Jump C. Uh, most characters, you can do like 4,600, 4,500, and, and also. The meter, you still get the meter back, still. So in this, so in a sense, in the corner, she's still CS1 light G. Mid screen, she, she, like, she isn't much weaker. The only thing is, she can't, she, she can't cancel. I think the Itsu nerf was, is way bigger than I actually realized because when I watch my old CS1 matches, the amount of times I do, like, I don't know, jump B, C, 61 hit and the stick comes back and I catch with the Itsu and you just go. I did it a lot, so I think I think Itsu is probably one of like the biggest nerf and the reason she's not as steer in this game. She has no bad matchups, I think. Not a single one. Uh at worst at worst she has like 4.5 I don't even, I don't even think that like I don't think she has any matches that aren't worse than even right now uh, It's just compared to Makoto has Valk She just doesn't have that mid screen that high mid screen damage off just hits just hits um, and, and also she doesn't get like rewarded for using her meter mid screen uh, with damage she can combo with the dice shot in mid-screen, but depending on what you start with, the damage isn't really high. You do take him to the corner and get Oki, okay, which is good. If you don't have the meter for it, like, there aren't... There's only one dice shooting combo that I know of that actually gives 50 meter back, and it's very position-specific. Position so, keep that in mind. Uh, Jin, uh, Jin doesn't really need... <laughs> you don't really need to talk about... Jin too much. Jin, I think, is about the same as Lychee. No bad matchups, really. Uh, he... He has... His corner damage is high. Like, his corner damage is really high. He still has the same shenanigans, like, 6B shenanigans. He has less gimmicks than before because they took off some special cancels or things you can't do like silly resets off throw and stuff but the damage makes up for it the corner carry makes up for it really easy to hit confirm with him really easy to hit confirm with him sometimes i get upset like i get randomly hit like some people some gens just run around and hit buttons and you just get random hit it's just b jump 2c double jump jump 2c d oh knock down great and Jin Jin's turn Plus 6A is like plus on hit, which is really good for him. Something you can actually abuse. And his DPs, like, his DPs are really, I don't know what it is. They're good, I guess. 
They're <laughs> they're good. Uh, very very versatile character. Overall, he he deals with a lot of situations as well. He doesn't get zoned hard. He doesn't get outranged hard. He just does everything. He's like Lightyear. He does everything well. He does mid screen damage a little bit better. I think than she does, but I don't think his corner game is as good as hers. Plus, I don't think his pressure as good is as good as hers, despite having good pressure. Uh, Rachel, another character that I don't think really needs like ultra in depth analysis. Rachel, Rachel is like um. She is more or less the same. This it's just her damage is higher. That's that's more or less it to me. Her damage is higher. They gave her like uh, like six B jump cancel. I think the jump to C buff is good for her. That she has to continue pressure of normal, so that's good for her. Uh she's really good, like her neutral game's good, pressure's good, damage's good, two C's two C I think is actually two C and Rising J are probably like the two best things about her. The only problem with Rachel, actually, yeah, I should say problems. There's a couple of problems. First, it's that she does, she can be out zoned. They're like A, out zoned, or B, people can deal with her zoning. So, like, like Tao, Lychee Jin. Hazama and Val can all deal with the zoning. Makoto just does enough damage to not care. I shouldn't say not care, but she does enough damage that that uh, the Rachel matchup isn't like too obnoxious for her because it should it should be bad. It should be bad. Makoto doesn't actually have good ways to deal with the zoning, but her damage makes up for it when she's in. The other problem I think what Rachel has right now is she she doesn't have high potential like she's good she's obviously like a good character but right now unless they change rachel in some dramatic way next game it's there's not a lot of new things to worry about against rachel like if i play a rachel i never i'm never going to think oh what is he going to do some silly trick that i don't know about to me the last time i actually did get, get hit by a, a rachel like trick just like gimmicky, no, I shouldn't say gimmicky, just trick, but like I didn't know, was I played Jason D at Revelations, and he did cross up George to me mid screen. I believe this was in a team's tournament too. And I, I was pretty surprised because I didn't know about it, I didn't think about it. But I mean, outside of stuff like, outside of like that, Rachel, I mean, she has solid 50 50s. Like, it's not like she needs stuff like that, but. For Jin, like once, like you see Jin just come up with these new ways to like cross up and stuff. Lychee obviously has like infinite potential almost. Like her, her potential isn't very high. It's the only problem. It's a problem, I think. But still, she's a plus character, one of the stronger characters. So Tao, um, Tao. Tao, Tao's the same character. Tao, surprisingly, has, since I just talked about Rachel's potential being low, Tao, surprisingly, has really high potential. She, I constantly see Tao players doing new stuff and coming up with new stuff and new ways to go into, like, air throw resets and stuff. So, and plus her air throw goes into, like, 4,000 damage, so those are really good for her. Her corner damage is high, pretty high. I've been seeing, and I've started to do also, uh, people do like blah blah, 3C, all three hits, 2C, and 2C's, 2C's relatively adds a good 300 damage to like her corner combos. She's doing like, she can do around like 4,000 ish of corner combos if you do the whole corner combo. Uh, Outside of that, she's more she's more or less the same character as CS1 with a damage nerf and her 5D, jump 5D was nerfed. Uh, but those hurt because she was she was doing a good like 4,500 to 5,000 damage off random hits sometimes. It was kind of obscene, let's say. 
<laughs> obscene. Her neutral game is still really good, but just the just 5D being nerfed a little bit uh, hurts her her movement a little bit. Uh, she's the same. She's the same. She's the same for the most part. Uh, the counter saw being nerfed is despite it being ridiculously fast. I think what is it? it's like 15 frames. Yeah, it's like 15 frames, something really fast. Yeah, it is 15 frames. Wow. And you compare it to light cheese. Light cheese is like uh, slower. Oh wow, light cheese faster. Why does light cheese look slow? Light cheese. Uh, okay. Tiles looks really fast for some reason, but it's the thing is it's like huge. It's really big. It's hard to bait. Once Tao gets you off her, then it's hard to get her. It's still the same. It's still the same. Um, Carl. Carl. Carl could could be one. Well, could have been one of the best characters, but just just the amount of meter he uses with the sister just hurts a lot. Uh, despite that, I mean, unblockable. There's not there's not actually much to say about Carl. It's unblockable. All day to practice, practice it, get good at it. Uh, he does. He does. He does always have like. He does always have these like character specific punishes, like these burst punishes. You know, like when they burst and do walk up throw with the sister and stuff. He ha he has high potential, always. But he normally focuses centers around one thing. So despite the unblockable being really good, I, uh, more than really good, like ridiculously good, just the sister. Like managing the sister's meter, since she since you use so much, uh, for each, for each use I should say, hurts him. Especially, most of the characters that are above him, uh, are either good at killing the sister or good at moving around the sister. Like I'm, I was watching a match of Nose versus this Carl, and he was turtling with four DB, four DB, uh pretty much takes you to the other side of the screen. It takes you really, really far. Especially if they chase you. It takes you all the way to the other side of the screen. So his mobility is still not that good and it hurts. Uh, he has the mid-screen damage, as in he can kill you. <laughs> there's not there's not much to say outside of just unblockable and the sister gauge being like hurting him. Hurts his pressure, hurts the reset potential a little bit. What I like about it is that, excuse me. What I like about it is that it it really kind of separates the good Carl's from the bad. I know most of the bad Carl's just run through their sister meter like crazy, while the good Carl's manage them really well. So I think I think that's fine. If they, I'm not sure if in CS Extend they are actually. Like making it even cost even more gauge to use a sister, but I think that would be too much. Uh, I think the last character, yeah, the last character in there is Mew. Mew twelve. Mew is extremely obnoxious. Uh, obviously high potential character, high corner damage. Six. Her overhead is really good. And it's more or less safe. And the thing is, her overhead, uh, her overhead functions well, both mid screen and the corner. Like if you do overhead mid screen, it's not like it's not like you do a lot of damage. You do like, I think it's like one point seven, but it blows him back full screen, which is great for her because she wants to just zone and control space. Uh, it's not my my understanding of the character at this point. Uh, as far as fighting against her goes, is you. I mean, if you can stop them from setting up, you can beat her. If if you let her play her game, she can win, and she's really good at doing that. Uh, her bad matchups are pretty solidly difficult for her. Like Hazama, I think Lychee might be even. Uh, I think Tao does well as well. Uh, Makoto obviously has the damage thing going for her, as usual, and of course Valk has just the mobility to deal with it. Uh, moving on to A tier, uh, Lambda, same strength as Subaki, Platinum, Ragnar, Arakune, Bang, and Hakuman. 
So, Lambda, uh, Lambda's corner damage, the two things that, the two great buffs about Lambda, once again, just like in CS1, I think Lambda is the defining mid-tier character. Uh, she has really apparent strengths and really apparent weaknesses. Her mix-up is much better in CS1, I should say. Much better. Her corner damage, and actually her mid-screen damage too, if you can hit confirm well, is much better. But... Uh, oh, yeah, she got like a 6D buff, I think. The 6D goes full screen now or something. All good things for her. The the same problems apply, though. Uh, similar to Rachel, she gets outzoned by, say, like, Lychee, Hazama. People can move around, like, Valk and Tao. Her not having Gravity Pit as a DP really does hurt her. So when people are in, they're in. They're in on her. That's it. She has Counter Assault and Calamity Sword. That's it. For the most part. Or cross your fingers, how about it? Like, that's it. Uh, outside of that, though, strong. She's a good character. She's really good at setting a pace to the match, which I think is really, really important. Really important for his owner. Because last game, it felt it felt a little bit like she, could, she couldn't set a pace, which is why she had, like, problems with Bang and stuff, with Bang flying around and shit. This game, like, she's the defining mid-tier, as I said, and seeing like how good she is, that's that says a lot about how good the overall cast is. Subaki, uh, I mean, where do I start? Subaki, Subaki's pressure is still really good. Like last game, I thought Subaki's pressure was really good. She just didn't have the damage, but now like with like the D buffs, uh, like charge buffs, and her damage is up. She has great corner carry. She has one of the best anti airs in the game. Two C. Uh, she turned into, like, they turned her into, like, a kind of, a pretty annoying character. Like, once she gets one charge, uh, I'm pretty sure C's shield rush is safe from max distance, and D's shield rush is just safe. So once she gets, like, one charge, she just controls this, like, like, 90, I should say half the screen. It's, like, a big right triangle that she just controls right away. It's really good. Her pressure is good. She still has unblockable. The main thing is people. The people who can prevent her from trolling with shield rush are the people who beat her. Uh, again, I think she's like Lambda too. I think she's the other defining mid tier character. The last game, I think it was Lambda and Jin who defined mid tier. This game, I think it's Lambda again and Tsubaki. Plat, Plat. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to to be able to play against Platinum a lot when the game came out. I was playing, you guys might know him, Secret Netplay King, Lost Soul. Shout outs to Lost Soul for living in New York and being <laughs> ridiculously good. Uh, Plat... Platinum. Her, her neutral, her, his, I don't know. Her neutral is very, very good. Uh, 5B is a little slow, recovery-wise. Uh, 5C, like her damage, her corner damage is good. Like there's no, there's no way around it. Her corner damage is good. Her her mix-up is good. She can control space. The main thing is, what hurts her is like, she needs certain items for certain matchups, and the items are random. Like that's that's the main thing. Hazama gets really difficult when you're like getting unlucky and not getting missiles or bombs. Zoners get really difficult. Um, her tool to deal with people with more range than her, I think like Kitty Stick is really good at that. But it's not like she needs reward off it. I don't know. I, it just feels a little bit lacking to me. Some of her items feel a little bit lackluster. Uh, her potential is very very high. Uh, I remember constantly just being like, "Whoa, what are they doing with her?" While they were like figuring her out and stuff. She seems like a basic character, but she's not. You need like a really good understanding of her and. For some for some odd reason, people like being random with her, like really random. I think you could just play her. Uh, I guess she's a little bit by bang, like bang. Like you could just play solid and a dash of random, and you're in there. Uh, Pan TK Pan is excellent. TK Pan is so good. Six B is so good. Uh, I think I think just the items itself is what hurts her, but she needs 
So you sometimes need specific items to win. Uh, Ragna, Ragna's Ragna. We all know. Ragna is the same. Ragna's always been the same. Ragna always has the same problems. Uh, he's just, he's like simple, which is good. He's like, but he's too simple. So compared to like some of the top tiers with like, they have like techno like all this technology and all this ridiculous stuff. And Ragna, uh, nothing much. Cross up DP, DDP isn't even like that special anymore. He's still good though. His mid screen damage is, you know, you know, same. As in, it's not, his damage is lower than actually ever was. Like, I was pretty surprised to see Ragna not doing 4,000 off Gauntlet, to be honest. Um, Arakune, uh, I don't know what to say about this fucking character. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I can't stand Arakune as a character. I really hate him. But, I mean, you have to learn all the matchups. So, I just grit my teeth and play it. But, he, I feel like there's no way to make him just fair. Like, he's, like, this game, last game, last couple of games, he was just stupid. This game, he's like still kind of stupid, but since he can't just kill you off like one thing, he he's not good. Like I think that's like silly. Uh, I know a lot of people like say, but he still can kill you off this setup. I'm like, okay, great. But overall, like FFG, which everyone's scared of FFG. FFG isn't actually too scary. Like, if you have a character that has some kind of good stalling tool. That FFG is not a scary way to get into Curse, despite Curse being still scary. Uh, um, air throw, like all the stuff, all the stuff that I used to be really scared of, like Gold Burst, Air Throw, 5C, 2C, a little bit less scary. I think 5C you only get 70% Curse on Fatal now, unless someone wants to correct me. I do believe you can't, there is a way to get 100 Curse off his overhead. Don't quote me on it though. But... Overall, like his one thing that is good is that he got 5A, 2A, 5A, so that's really good for him. But outside of that, uh, just just like less fear about being totally rendered out by him and the one mix up death. Like, despite it, it's actually terrible that me saying, Oh, I'm only taking 6,000 or only taking 7,000 after curse is like a good thing, but it's better than taking like 10k or 9k. So, <laughs> and okay, he still has the same problems against his owners. Like, Lychee still beats him, Rachel still beats him, Lambda beats him, Mew beats him, Asama beats him. He has, like, these bad matchups, and he just doesn't kill. Like, his 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 strength was that he could still be okay if he just robbed you somehow, but he, he doesn't have that. Uh, Bang. Bang is another kind of high potential character. I constantly see, I, I, I saw Kenzo doing some crazy corner stuff with bumpers uh you guys all know by now he has like the 7,000 damage corner command grab rc bumper loop thing that he could do he's got stuff it's not like he doesn't have things i think it's just like he has bad matchups and he doesn't he, his damage mid screen is just pitiful like i think i think if you get like fatal five if you get like fatal 5c you only get like 2,000 damage mid screen like come on like he doesn't he doesn't. He has the corner carry, but it's not like like a solid corner carry. Like you still have to be from like match start position, round start position. That really hurts him, to be honest. Uh, the nerfs to him were pretty fair. Um, overall, I think they nerfed him too much, but some of them were fair. Five A slower, five B five B slower was definitely good. Two B having the additional pushback. I like to that. It, uh, I don't know, just. Him being too weak and neutral, uh, not neutral, mid screen, is what hurts him the most, I think. And it, 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 it accentuates, it's like accented when he plays against like Makoto, Hazama, Valk, you know, all the top tier characters who like, if they get like that counter hit, that good counter hit, they take you to the corner. Because yeah, like Makoto, Makoto gets like, say you're playing neutral, she's fishing for 5B, and like really fishing for it hard, you do 5B 2C or 5B dash 5A for like auto confirm. 
But meanwhile, Bang, does, Bang doesn't have anything like that that will take him to the corner for the most part. It hurts. Uh, Hakuman, kind of the same thing. My opinion of Hakuman has changed a little bit since uh, I played Spark at Evo uh, a little bit. But I think overall, he still has that same position. Uh, he's He is really good in the corner. Like He does get that damage in the corner. Mid screen, like the main the main thing is D isn't as scary as before. I think Hakuman's neutral game is still scary, and he still gets the damage, and like he gets some situational corner carry, but uh, plenty of situations still, not like like Lychee kind of deal. Uh, but like everyone getting special pressure on him, or like these special resets, like, it's the overheads. Uh, D D jump D not leading into four thousand five hundred is just. I hate to say it, it hurts. Like, I hate how shitty it was like, that you could just kind of mash jump D and cross your fingers. But the fact that you barely get anything off it now, it just hurts. Uh, plus, his mobility being low kind of hurts in some matchups like Valk, Tao, even even Hazama, despite him being able to cut chains. Hazama gets 5A pressure on him, too, so it's it, it's tough for him. But he does he does have the potential to, like, win. Like, just with counters and being smart. And he does have the extra health and primer. So last but not least, uh, B, uh, B plus by himself. Uh, it's going to be Tager. Tager, uh, I mean, we all know about Tager. Uh, not that good damage. Like, Tager, you have to random, you have to rely on random not too much. And people just play safe. You have to like be so good to be. You have to be pretty good to win of Tager, like against some characters, especially when you're like getting zone and stuff. He has a terrible matchup against Carl. Even has like a bad matchup against Bang. Like it's it's tough for him. It's tough to beat Tager, which makes me wonder why so many people play Tager. Uh, I don't know. People like him. <laughs> He's got that random factor though, always for him. If we had single limb tournaments, it'd be better for him, but. And like two out of three and stuff, like just having to rely on gimmicks so much, and cross your fingers is not good enough. Despite him still being a, a good grappler overall, and the thing is, most of the time, your answers to like people trying to guess command grab isn't that scary. Uh, I think and who's who's the guy? I think some people do like two B command grab or two B three C. 3C just leads into gadget. Like that, that doesn't do anything. That does, I mean, no, I should say that doesn't do anything. But I'm not scared to go into a gadget. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just shrugging off Tiger. Uh, that's it. There's a lot. This took a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to talk about Persona. <laughs> Actually, but uh, I guess there's a lot of characters in this game now. Uh, if if you wanted to compare. Uh, I think, I actually think I ordered the characters pretty differently than Arcadia did. Uh, if you want to talk about it, talk about it on Dust Loop, talk about it in the comments. Um, before I cut out though, I do want to say I am ridiculously hyped for Persona Fighter just because it's a Persona Fighter. I'm gonna say it. Uh, it's, I don't know what character I want to play. Out of the characters are out. I don't know what character I want to play. It's really hard to pick a character in a game that's licensed that you know. Like, if you know all the characters. Like, BB, the characters are kind of archetyped. Archetyped a little bit. Like, when I went to play CT for the first time, I just went around all the characters. And I saw Lychee. I just stopped and pressed A. Like, I'm like, alright, this is my character. Just, she looks like a character I'll play. But when you have, like, main character, P4 main character. I don't like Igus. I'm not going to play her. Uh, uh, I think I'll play like Mitsuru if Mitsuru's in, Naoto, or if they put Margaret in, that'd be really cool. I'd play her. I don't know who else, though. Uh, I don't know, I have to wait until it comes out. It should be at TGS. I am going to Japan next week, so I will try it. I will try it. I'm kind of hype. Uh, actually, I'm really hype. Uh, I know the game would probably suck for its version though, but whatever. I like the characters.
That's the power of a, of a licensed fighter. All right, uh, that's it. Wow, this is like podcast length rather than vlog length. But uh, hopefully this makes up for lack of a camera or a actual vlog episode. I'll talk about Summer Jam, I think, a little bit next week. Uh, all right, I'll do like a quick summary. Summer Jam was pretty pretty good. Uh, turnout wasn't very big, as you guys might have seen. Um, unfortunately, because of the storm, like I said, it was hard for people to come out. Uh, I managed to win BB and Melty. Uh, Eric, you might have seen him. Eric, he got the third in BB. And Melty, he was playing like surprisingly well. I was like, whoa, this guy stepped it up a little bit. But he lost to the guy who won Arcana Comic Z in the Losers Finals, and I just beat Comic. Uh, I got to try CC. That game's fun. But it was the setup was actually laggy. Like, the guy was like, I'm sorry, my setup's laggy. I don't know why. But I did get to test things. Uh, game's fun. I hate PCL, as expected. I did learn some things about PCL. Uh, hopefully, in the next version, she's not going to be as silly. Same with C. Koha, but I don't know. You never know. At least they're testing it more and releasing it in October. Um, Alright, that is it for this episode. It's nice and chunky for you. Uh, I will do one next week, and then the week after, I will be doing one from Japan. Hopefully, the next two will actually be video logs rather than this. Uh, Alright, if you guys want, like I said, if you guys want to talk about the tier discussion or like the matchup discussion, just post in the comments or post on Dustloop about it. Alright, signing out.